I, I started by saying that before the season, you never know which is going to be the best division in football. For me, I would have told you it was going to be the team or the division in the North. And it would have been the AFC North. And I felt like I would have been correct with Baltimore, with Pittsburgh, Cleveland, obviously Cincinnati. But six weeks in, it is the actual opposite division of the North, the NFC North, that has been one in which every team right now currently has a winning record. They've got one undefeated team, but they've also got the team that are playing the best football because of the quarterbacks. And I got to thinking a little bit, if you had to rank these quarterbacks in that division, how do you rank these quarterbacks? Are we putting Jordan Love at the top or has Jared Goff's resume show that he's taken a team to a Super Bowl, has started a Super Bowl? Should he be at the top? But then you got the young emerging Caleb Williams. We saw on Sunday, uh, Rich Eisen had so many superlatives. He and Kurt Warner going off about Caleb. Oh, what a throw from Caleb. I mean, that's just what it is. Caleb Williams right now. And then Sam Darnold. Are we still thinking about Sam Darnold of the New York Jets? Or are we thinking of Sam Darnold, who's actually a brand new quarterback that has good coaching for the first time in a very long time? Well, last year he was the backup in San Fran, but that was Brock Purdy's show. Under Kevin O'Connell, the Minnesota Vikings are undefeated right now, 5-0. and So how do I rank these teams? Who is the best team in the division? After a great win yesterday, the Detroit Lions look like they can be there. But then I looked at the Green Bay Packers. And after missing some time early after week one, Jordan Love seems to be back to what we envisioned he would be and why he got the big contract. Watching him throw the ball yesterday in the rain, and he showed why yeah, he nice. is done. <laughs> yeah. Look, man, Arizona is a tough team. They, they, they're not, I know their record may not be what people think it is, but I don't view them as the same old Arizona Cardinals. They're a good team, especially defensively, what Buda Baker and those guys have been able to do, Mac Wilson at the linebacking spot, all of that. But Jordan Love was carving him up. And to see Romeo Dobbs, who was suspended last, the previous week, yep. they found a way to get him the ball, and he was a factor. Christian Watson, there was something that told me to start Christian Watson in the all-gas, no-breaks fantasy football team. You started team. him yesterday? I did start him yesterday. Wow, look at you. <laughs> it was, well, everybody else was on a... <laughs> oh, okay. I, I, Devontae, had a necessity. <laughs> yeah, out of necessity, I had to start Christian Watson. <laughs> and, and the only reason why that. was because... Never admit that. Yeah, don't admit I know, I do admit that because I... I Think about it. I have a big giant zero, or not a zero, but an O next to Devontae Adams' name, by the way. <laughs> so like, I, I can't start Devontae Adams. I want to start Devontae Adams, but that would give me zero points. So Christian Watson, hey, here you are. But I just love the division because I don't know who's the best team. I don't know who's going to win. But I'll tell you this. This is going to come down to the wire all the way down. I think you said it, TJ. Who would have thought that a Vikings-Lions game in the early part of the yep. season would be potential. sort of the, a potential game of the year with two teams fighting for the spot to be who's going to be the top? It's funny that you, at 4-2, and two, you're still two games behind, or is it a game and a half behind because obviously Minnesota hasn't played six games yet, but you're a game and a half, almost two games behind. You could be three games behind if you don't win – against the Minnesota Vikings. It's funny how this is playing out. If you had to rank them, no, Brockman, right now, oh, man, who, that's who, so hard. who is the top quarterback in the NFC North? For me, I'll tell you, I'm going with Jared Goff. Okay. And then after that, I honestly believe it is Jordan Love. Now, three and a four, toss up. Toss up for me. And I'm not going with the recency bias. I'm not going with the recency bias of Caleb Williams, number one overall pick, already jumping over Sam Darnold. He looks great. Sam Darnold is a, is a former number three overall pick. Yep. And he's starting to play like that because he's in the right place. In Carolina, let's be real, he was not that. He was seeing ghosts in, the new, in, with, in his New York Jets uniform. Last year, he had the red shirt with the 49ers. And now he's finally playing. So he's been in a transfer portal three different times, and he's finally found the right program with the Minnesota Vikings. I've got him at three, and I think Caleb Williams is still at four. I still need to see more. I'm not, I'm, I can't forget what it looked like for Caleb Williams the first two or three games of the season. Now the last two weeks has started to look a little more like the quarterback we expected to see coming out of USC. And I think when you start to – 
see Caleb Williams, his demeanor, the, the guys are buying in. I, I think you can see a different Caleb Williams, and you can hear a different Caleb Williams. Here he is after the win uh, on Sunday. Yeah, I think uh, I think throughout this whole process of, of these you know past couple games we've had, I think uh, I've I've been seeing it well, um, um, and that starts you know throughout the whole week watching film, getting there in practice, um, talking to the coaches, players, and things like that. Um, so I think seeing it well, um, I think uh, the comfort level of just you know like I've like I've talked about before, getting back to playing football and um, you know where where I need to be, eyes need to be. Um, if I need to hold a safety, if I you know need to just hang on a route, um, so just getting back, uh, getting back comfortable of of, of just uh, um, having that feel for the game. Um, obviously, you, you study, you watch, and do all these other things, but um, you know once once the ball snap, you gotta you gotta have that uh, that post snap read and um, know what you have to do and, and be confident about it. So um, I think that's uh, what I can uh, contributed to. And he spread the football around. And I'm yep. starting to see a much better quarterback. Shout mm-hmm. out to uh, Rich Eisen for one of the better lines of the game. Um, there is no I in commit, but there is an M and an E, by the way. So there is a me, not an I, but mm-hmm. a me for Cole Commit, who had a five <laughs> catches, 70 yards, one of the great lines of the game uh, from Rich. Um, All right, Craig, you're talking about quarterbacks, quarterbacks. in the North, okay? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I'm going to look at metrics, right? Because. Uh, we're living in an analytic world. Oh, don't go. And don't I want and I want to analyze things. Are you going the uh, the PFF grade? No, no, I'm not. I'm just. I looking, had a coach, I, by the way. I had a college coach tell me say he doesn't care about the PF Chain grade. That's what he calls it, PF, PF Chain. Chang. I don't pretty, care that's about that's your PF funny. Chain grade. But, <laughs> but I don't, I look, at, I look at passer rating, right? No yeah. one knows what the formula is, but passer rating is is okay. Say, uh, Jared Goff uh, is the best passer rating quarterback okay. in the North. Sam Donald right behind him. Uh, followed by Love and Caleb is fourth, right? Mm-hmm. What about yards per game? Think about yards per game. Well, Jordan Love uh, has the most yards per game of any quarterback in the North. Second overall in the league. Goff, uh, then Sam Darnold, then Caleb Williams, right? Then what if I go, uh, what about completion percentage? That's a really good uh, measurement of mm-hmm. how good a quarterback is. Well, Jared Goff is is first at 71%. And then, you know, then you go down and it's, oh, ooh, Sam Darnold's way down. So it's a, I'm just looking at... Things, but then you need an eye test. That also right. matters. Sam Donald's hit a lot of big plays. That's their offense. That's kind of their offense. Yeah. Throw it deep, maybe hit some of these guys. Hit Jordan Addison, hit Justin mm-hmm. Jefferson, obviously. Hawk is coming back coming uh, soon for the Vikings. I think I'm with you. I think it's Jared Goff right now. Yep. I think he's probably the best quarterback. He's probably playing the best. Jordan Love is coming on, but Sam Donald obviously has been so consistent throughout the first five weeks. I think I'm going to give a little bit of slight edge to Sam Donald. I'm going to have him second, and I'm going to have Love I'm going to have Love third, third? Have, and I have a Caleb fourth. Wow. Caleb has only done it really the last couple of weeks. Right. Okay. Need to see it more. Need to see more consistency. I want to see better play calling. I want Shane Waldron to up his game too. A lot of complaints from Bears fans about Shane Waldron. Mm. Jackson Smith, the Jigba, had the line of the year when he was asked about him because obviously he came from Seattle. <laughs> he came from Seattle, he yeah. stopped the interview and went, are we live? <laughs> that, that told me a lot that I needed to know also. <laughs> but like I test, it's yeah. early. Can Caleb get out of the basement? Yes, I think so. Will Sam Darnold kind of regress to the mean a little bit? Yes, I think so. I also think the Packers can go to the Super Bowl. So I think Jordan Love is going to climb up there. Goff, can he keep it going? Look, they play all their games in domes practically, right? When the weather gets a little tougher, I like what I saw out of Jordan Love a little bit better. What I'm trying to say is you can't really go wrong with any four of these guys. They're all playing really high-level football right now, and I think that's really cool, and it's really fun. Yeah, I agree. I, I love that. I love what you said there because they're all playing really good football, and as the season goes along, we'll see these head-to-head matchups and how much it will be on the quarterback, how much will it be on the coach. I still feel like with Shane Waldron, you've got to be conservative in your play calls because – you don't want to give the full playbook to your rookie right away. Also, DeAndre Swift has been really awesome the last he's, couple he's of weeks. Been great. Got off to such a slow start, TJ. We were wondering, wow, mm-hmm. is this the biggest bust of the free agent market in the last no. season? Because remember, he was the first running back to sign Correct. Uh, with Chicago. Now we're starting to see it. A lot more involved in the pass game. He's running the rock better, and, the, and that's why the Bears are 4-2. I don't think people realize how good of a player Keenan Allen is. Like, Keenan Allen has now made, I think, Caleb Williams whole. Like, th- when he was injured in the first part of the season, Keenan Allen is always open. Always open. He's always open. 
Like that dude doesn't get enough credit for his releases at the line of scrimmage, his separation that he gets at the line of scrimmage. Incredible route runner. No yep. really and then about. he got two touchdowns. Look, DJ Moore is going to be your big play guy. Rome Madunze, young player, still emerging. He's still got an outstanding tight end in Cole Komet we just talked about. But the uptick in the offense since Keenan Allen has come back from the hamstring injury, it's there's a reason why Caleb Williams is playing better. Yep. There's a reason why their offense is playing better. Because if you know you've got a guy on third and six, third and seven, and you got a guy who knows how to go get it. Like some teams don't have that. Like I cover the Rams, right? For their radio network. They don't have Puka Nakua. They don't have Cooper Cup. When it's third and seven, you gotta have a guy that you can go to it. We were talking about the Ravens. The Ravens have Lamar Jackson and Derrick Henry, all right? When you think about the Cowboys, you think CeeDee Lamb, Dak Prescott, you still have a gotta have it guy. Some teams don't have that gotta have it guy. I know where Jared Goff is going on third and six. You better yep. find Amon Ross St. Brown. Yep. Yeah, but now it could be JMO. It could you know it could be Jamar out the backfield. That's why these lines are so dangerous right, right. now. Right. It could be that. It's not just Sun God anymore. That's that's what makes I think Green Bay a little dangerous too. Because you don't know who's going to. Because you ball. don't know who will get the ball. I watched. They came here to Los Angeles to play against the Rams and watching it up close and personal. And you're like, who's going to get the ball? Dobbs wasn't even available, and yet here goes Romeo Dobbs mm-hmm. making plays. Here comes. Christian Watson now, who's now available, right? Jaden Reed is like one of the best receivers in the league that we don't even talk about enough. Dude just catches a couple touchdowns a week. Like, oh, Jaden Reed has another touchdown. Jaden Reed. Tucker Craft has a touchdown. These dudes. Dontavian Wicks has three touchdowns this year. I mean, like I said, man, you you, you don't know. You don't know which one of these cats you got to try to shut down. And Josh Jacobs, too. He got a running back, by the way. I like Green Bay, man. I know. I just love the way this division is playing out. I really do. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.